Okay. Um, so uh, I'm Joel Fernandez. I work in the uh, Android kernel team at Google. Uh, this talk is about a tool I wrote that happened to solve some problems for me. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. It's like a, I call it the better ADB shell. Um, so, 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 I, so I'm I'm in the kernel team. So one of the things that I've I've always tried to do and wanted to do was to run Android, uh, you know, while Android is running, do some kind of tracing, uh, run tools that can tell me what's happening in the kernel and the system. Uh, and I, uh, you know, I, I could never do this uh, successfully uh, to the extent that I, I, I would have liked to do. Uh, so basically, I wanted to run BCC, um, which is the eBPF compiler collection trace command for ftrace, uh, perf, and there are different ways to, to run these, uh, you know, uh, cross-compile them and push static binaries and stuff like that, but I wanted a way to, to run them um, while Android is running, fully featured. I'm sure many of you have tried to do that as well. Um, so, broadly speaking, I, broadly speaking, I wanted to run any, any open source package out there <laughs> Um, you know, either from binary in binary form or in source form, uh, build it from source. Uh, you know, typical, just like a typical Linux system, uh, be able to do that. Uh, you know, and this kind of uh, nicely fits in the whole theme of the, this set of uh, this Linux Connect, which is running ARM on ARM, building, developing ARM on ARM. Um, so yeah, this I, I pulled the slide from George's uh, present. I added a little Android sign there, as well. Um, so, so what, typically what people do is they cross compile and they uh, push static binary, um, you know, of of some package. And this is, is a little bit of an error prone um, process. The you know, typically the static binaries are stored in some repository and you really don't know what you're pushing. Uh, you just hope that it has everything. That's funny because um, we were, this week we have met, in RTF we have met of patch to clarify how to cross compile because it was really difficult about yeah. the pass and so on. So clearly yeah, yeah. I agree on that. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a very error prone process. It's, uh, you know, uh, you have to often disable things and like, Cross-compiling trace command is a pain, and you have to disable things in it uh, just so that it would cross-compile. Uh, and there, and some some things just cannot be cross-compiled. So we need a better way. So the the Android user space is awesome for the Android framework. Uh, it's uh, it's it's kind of written. It was written in the early days when the systems were kind of small and. The C library was had a limited subset of of a typical C library. Uh, many things are missing, and that's still the case these days. Uh, many things will not uh, you'll not be able to compile and link with the, with the, with Bionic, and many libraries are are missing in in the Android user space that are not needed. Many of them are, are not even compatible with the license, so they cannot be included on the on the system. And getting stuff with the, uh, getting stuff working with the Android build system can be w very painful, even if you can uh, cross compile things. Just getting the Android build system to be able to build an open source package it's it's getting easier these days, but it's still uh, somebody tried to get trace command uh, building with the Android build system, and uh, it was just a mess. Uh, uh, and cross compiling in general uh, is is not easy it can it can be a slow process you have to compile uh, on a different machine push it uh, you know uh, so you you have all those kinds of issues things will not cross compile sometimes all that um, so the, the the solution that worked really well for me that that I came up with was to run Q, qemu dev bootstrap to build a root fs push that to the data partition and then ADB shell uh, run chroot with ADB shell on top of ADB shell, um, and uh, you know I, I, it it gives it uh, provides uh, a different uh, root environment, 
where I can uh, you know, do whatever I want. Uh, the, in reality, there are uh, several more things that happen to make sure things are working well, like the mounts have to be set up correctly, uh, and um, many different issues are already taken care of. So, uh, I, you know, the, this technique is not something new. It's like many people do it, but everybody has their own way of doing it. And so, uh, over time, uh, you know, the, I fixed fix a lot of issues uh, that have come up with, uh, you know, the, the, the quality of the experience of running ADB shell with a CH root. There are many, there are many different issues that I haven't, that I will not be talking about, but uh, you know, my hope is that uh, this project can be something that uh, people, uh, you know, a lot of people use, and uh, we can improve it and have a common solution. Um, so, uh, with that, we can do some demos, show you how it works, and stuff like that. So, my, my first demo will be like just compiling some, uh, you know, different, uh, different. Uh, projects on, on a Pixel 2 device I have here. Yeah, so th this was a Pixel 2 that I cloned, uh, sorry, the, the RT app project that I cloned yesterday. Uh, you know, it, it, this is running on the Pixel 2. You know, I can build it. Um, you know, I can make changes to it. So, the, so I'm running VI right now on top of ADB shell, with, you know, inside the CH root. Um, you know, all the colors and everything is appearing really, uh, really well. And you can make, uh, make changes uh, like, uh, you know, so I can change that and I can Build it, and you know the obviously the the change appears. Oh, did it? <laughs> Vincent, am I missing something? Yeah, another user. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. It. All right, so so there. So that you know. So this is an example of building. Uh, you know, editing, building, and running on device. Um, uh, I've done this to several different pro, uh, you know, packages. Uh, just a month ago, I wanted to modify the perf tool in Linux to do some things that I wanted it to do that it couldn't do. And I did this exact same process of editing, building, and running. And in 10 minutes, I was uh, able to fix bugs and make changes, stuff like that. Yeah, so I'll show, I'll show you that later because it tears it down. So I didn't want to show it first. I'll show you the how to get into it. It's basically one command, but so there you you have also in your in your root effects you have installed Git as well. Yeah, that's that's how I uh, cloned it from GitHub. Yeah. Uh, I cloned it on device. Um, so that's that's RT app, and then uh, I actually cloned the f the whole Linux kernel on device as well. Uh, and I built it in uh, 15 minutes, uh, 37 seconds. Um, but uh, I can also just compile a perf in the Linux kernel tree and show you that it'll finish really fast. So. Yeah, I have everything. So it's it's actually using De it's Debian uh, it's a Debian root file system, uh, okay. as I was saying. Root. Yeah. So you have uh, thousands of packages. Okay. Um, so th you know while this is going on, How big is the, uh, the it can be as big as you want. Uh, there are different root file systems that are pr already pre-built. Um, there's a minimal one. There's a full one can range from 40 MB to 500 MB. You have to pass different options to, uh, so yeah, 38 seconds uh, to build perf, which is kind of cool, like, you know, for a mobile device, uh, you know, eight cores, uh, eight threads. On, on 
4.15 perf was taking like, I think, 31 seconds, uh, so the time went up a little. Uh, but the interesting thing is on my uh, x86 ThinkPad, it was taking a little longer than like 33 seconds or something uh, at, at the time. So yeah, some people have been using it to run Rust programs uh, internally. Uh, so I, you know, I have a program in Rust here, like Hello World, and I can, you know, compile it. So, um, and then the other uh, demo I wanted to show was, uh, you know, it, it has the full uh, bin utils package, uh, so you can like do things like uh, disassemble uh, Android binaries. Uh, so you could do something like so you can, you know, uh, there are many many different things you can do with it. Um, so coming back to uh, so. I didn't show you how to set it up, right? So that's actually, you just have to clone a, the, the Git project, ADEB, it's, it's on GitHub. Everything is on GitHub. Uh, nothing is internal, so the, the root file system, uh, the, uh, the whole thing is, is on GitHub. So you clone it and then you just say, Yeah, basically you just say you just say ADEP prepare and it it would download the root file system for you, for you. You could also have it build it yourself, so you can say ADEP prepare build and it'll it'll build the, the the root file system for you on your device, on on your system. Yeah. So what have you installed by default? Yeah. Uh, just a few things like okay. so. There's a minimal version. When you say ADAP prepare, it just pulls the, yeah. the the minimal one, and then when you say full, it it it, it gets everything, all okay. the, the compilers and all that. Okay. So the minimal one just has app get and vi and a few things like that, and then with app get you you know once your device is on the internet, you can just download whatever you yeah. want over that. So you could customize it however you want. Um, so, so you, sorry. Yeah, you, uh, I, I think when we were discussing that, you, al you also have uh, some the BCC compiler to, to make some eBPF trace and as well. You're yeah. using that? Yeah, that? yeah, so I don't have a demo of that, but uh, so this is an example of uh, a tool for uh, looking at histograms of the run queue lengths on all the CPUs. Uh, this can show you issues where uh, too many tasks are running on CPU, so maybe the load balance is not working, or so there's some bug, or there are just too many tasks. So this can help you see that. So in this uh, example here, I have a synthetic test. I'm running Hackbench, and I've pinned it to CPU 6. Uh, I have um, eight threads pinned to a single CPU. So I'm actually... In, in inducing an issue, it's not a bug or anything, it's a user configuration thing. Um, and so, so you can see like uh, a lot of times the histogram for CPU 6, uh, you know, typically you would expect most of the time that the load is spread across and the run queue length is, uh, is zero because there's nothing in the run queue, everything is running. Um, but on CPU 6 you see that the run queue length uh, is greater than zero many times. Interestingly, uh, it, sh it only goes up till four, I think. It doesn't go up more than that. I think that's because the hack bench threads are like in pairs, yeah. yeah. Um, so BCC is, a, you know, you can, uh, this is just a small example of one of the tools. There are 150 tools that show you a lot of different things and different things happening in the kernel. So in this example, I ha you know, I ha this is an example of the trace uh, tool in BCC, uh, which uh, is showing you the arguments that are passed to a kernel function. Uh, so do sys open is the function that is called when the open sys call is, uh, is executed. 
So uh, yeah, so all this, uh, these tools are all running on within that CHRuter environment. It's all tested for a few months now. Um, so this uh, this tool can be useful for uh, many different purposes. People using it in automation for doing different things, running different tools, I guess. Um, So that's the that's the link. Um, you can go to that, and uh, you know there are instructions. It takes five minutes. Uh, the the uh, the root file system and everything is on the GitHub releases uh, directory. So it it comes from GitHub servers. Uh, we're thinking of moving that to Google Storage, so it's even faster. Um, but yeah, uh, everything is public, so feel free to use it and uh, you know contribute back to it. Yeah, no. that's looking really interesting. Yeah. Cool. Any so, other? so yeah, and you, so it's it's a fruit in parallel to yeah, it's so it's running in parallel to your Android uh, framework. So you can uh, still run some use case and monitor that. Yeah. Are you able to? Oh no, you, maybe you don't need because with the ADB you can do whatever you want. You are using an ADB connection. Yeah, okay. it's all over ADB. Okay. Yeah, and there there were several issues with BCC not able to par, um, not able to look up user space symbols because Android the way it uh, the way it it loads libraries into the memory is at an offset, so all the symbols were off and uh, all that has been fixed. So, um, so with this, uh, let's say have a I guess full. Image uh, root of this install. Have you tried uh, running SSH and then trying SSH into it? Does it work well? So the thing is, you can run ADB over Wi-Fi. So uh, you know, uh, I never had had any. I to guess uh, I feel like SSH is more uh, ubiquitous than ADB. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. That's fixed too. So you can have a number of windows in parallel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we are in our CI test loop. We are using workload automation with ADB, so having that running in parallel and monitoring that can be interesting as well. Yeah. So my use case for running a Debian build is. Uh, for example, uh, to enable a certain feature on a dev board, which is running a USB. For example, let's say uh, my lending team has given me a kernel, and it says that GPS they have verified on a Debian build. Right. So can I use chroot environment to verify all those uh, tools which they have used on their Debian build by yeah. running a USB in parallel? Yeah, you, uh, you run it as root, so uh, you know, everything. You can interact with the kernel the same way you would in a non ch root environment. So those are all bind mounted. When you when you run when you run this tool, it bind mounts uh, five or six different directories, including the Android uh, directories like system, so that we have access to the uh, symbols uh, from user space. Okay. So you have SysFS proc access. Right. Uh, you know you can do anything. You so want. I can emulate all the testing which they have done to verify that okay this kernel has GPS yeah. support. So I can just verify it on. Yeah, CSU. you should be able to run case of tests and all that. It should. I don't see a reason why uh, it wouldn't work. Yeah, it's a, it's. It, it was initially a set of scripts that I was using, and then it turned out to be useful. So then I turned it into a project. Uh, so that's kind of how it started. I guess I'm, one of the things I was kind of curious is how much uh, interaction with the Android framework do you end up doing from this? Because I, I, kind of being in your own sort of container and Android having its own sort of so execution. It runs, it, it's not, yeah, it's not running in a container, so it's, it shares the same PID space and all of that. Uh, there haven't been any issues that I came across with Android running. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't request for a service or interact with it. 
Yeah, uh, I, some I people have asked for for something like that as well, but yeah, I was curious if you can, you know, can you do stop from it, and does that do anything, or is it is yeah I, outside of the namespace? I haven't tried those things, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Stop. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this dump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, part of the reason is that the C library is not. Uh, uh, you know, can I build the uh, Android DB root FS from scratch? Is there a uh, build a script? Or I just uh, download the, the minimal package? Here? So it, it has both. So uh, the, the, the full build will actually download packages from Debian and build a root FS for you the way you want to. Uh, but that takes like 30 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, and then uh, there are pre built. Uh, file systems that are downloaded by default. By default, that's what happens. It, down, it downloads the pre-built uh, root file systems. Download the original file system. If I want to add some additional library, then I you could get build, build a or, library uh, yeah. on, on the file system and install. Yeah, you just clone it and build it the way you want. You can clone it or you can uh, install packages from Debian oh, servers. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Once you uh, set it up on the device, get into the device. Then. Okay. Cool. All right. Other questions? Okay. Thank. Thanks.